Have you ever thought about getting back with your ex? I mean, the ex, not just any ex, but like the ex that if you sat down with your friends and said, I'm thinking about getting back with my ex, you wouldn't even have to say their name. Your friends would automatically know who it was and probably look at you like you're out of your mind. I mean, I think most of us have at least had the thought about getting back with an ex. And in this episode, I am confident that I am going to be able to help you determine if it's a good idea or not. I'm Thomas, and I'm a sex researcher. In this episode, I'm going to help you decide if you should get back with your ex or not. But before I do that, I want you to go ahead and click that subscribe button down there, give this video a thumbs up, and then leave a comment when you're done watching. I love to get feedback and I would love to hear from you. But now back to helping you figure out if you should get back with your ex or not. And well, I'm going to use something that's a little bit different than what I usually do. I'm actually gonna use a reality TV show to help you figure it out. Back With The X is a reality show that just premiered on Netflix in January, but actually came out about six months ago in Australia. And it is quite the roller coaster. I'm going to tell you a little bit about each couple and what their biggest strength is, what their biggest weakness is, how it all ended up for them, and then a little bit of a spoiler of where they are now. I did some research, I did some Instagram stalking. I'm not proud of it, but I kind of dove into that rabbit hole, but now I have a ton of information for you. So to start with, I have to tell you the premise of the show. It is eight people, four couples, but they've broken up. One of them has contacted the show to try to get the other one to come on and see if they can still make it work. So they're going to spend three weeks together. They have an initial first date, then they spend one week at one of their homes, the other week at the other one's home, and they go on vacation together for a week, and then at the end decide if they actually want to give it another shot or not. So beginning with the worst, Meg and Jeremy. This is the couple that always fights all the time. They could be having a great time and then two seconds later they're fighting and you don't even know what they're fighting about and it's unclear if they know what they're fighting about. So the lowdown is they met when they were very young. I believe 14 and 17. Uh, this is from information I found on the internet. So there could be a little bit difference there. Uh, I don't know if that's legal or not in Australia but we're just gonna roll with it. Anyway, they were off and on for seven years years. At one point, he leaves and goes away to travel. She's devastated, doesn't date anyone for a year. Then he comes back, they start dating, then he leaves again. So it's just a lot of back and forth. And now it's three years later, and he has decided that he wants to make it work with her again. So their first date, he shows up at the restaurant, and she just loses her mind right away. She can't be there, she has too much anxiety, she starts crying, she runs away. This becomes a theme throughout any argument they have. So this is the couple that fights all the time, but they like love fighting. That is their biggest weakness, is that they simply can't get along. Now their biggest strength as a couple is their commitment. They are committed to being in this relationship, even though they are both miserable all the time all the time. Uh, there's one episode where his friends are there and she comes out and he's just told his friends that he's going to try to make it work with her again. And his friends are pissed. So that is a big red flag. If you are thinking about getting back with an ex and none of your friends think it's a good idea, it's probably not a good idea. So their story ends with them going to Africa, having a great time, going to this beautiful dinner, and then fighting at dinner because they can't forgive each other for how they've hurt each other in the past. Not only can they not forgive each other, they can't even admit what they've done. They never take responsibility for their actions. So they have this beautiful dinner outside under the stars. She ends up getting upset and leaving and he had just shaved his head because he wanted to impress her. This is kind of a theme throughout the show, a little bit of people trying to change themselves for the other person, which we'll get into that too. Also another red flag. And then they meet back the next day to decide if they're going to make it work or not. This is the weirdest scene ever. They sit next to each other, Talk about how much they like each other and how much they want to be together, but that they both know that they make each other miserable. And then they end up hugging and saying that they're going to make it work. I, 
I don't know what what they were thinking. So I did do some sleuthing online and it looks like they broke up shortly after. I think the biggest takeaway from this couple, do not try to make it work with someone you don't get along with. The second worst couple is Lauren and Eric. So Lauren and Eric were together for six years. They also broke up six times within that period, and they only had sex six times the entire time they were together. Now, I'm not a religious man, but that is three sixes right in a row, and that is a sign. They are not good. But it is not her fault. Lauren seems great. She seems caring. She has her life together. She um, has confidence. She believes in herself. I don't think it was always this way, and she definitely says that it wasn't. And Eric is a narcissist. All Eric cares about is himself. One year for her birthday, he gave her a birthday card with $10,000, and he told her that she could either pay off her student loans or get a boob job. And he was serious. He wanted her to get a boob job even though she didn't want to get one. Additionally, during their relationship, he told her that she needed to cut her hair or he was going to break up with her. So she cut her hair. Again, back to changing appearance to try to get someone to like you more or to care about you more. Now this couple resonates with me a lot in that respect because I have dated someone in the past, the person who I would consider to be the ex, and that person tried to get me to change a lot of things about myself. And it's very painful and I did change a lot of things about myself to try to make that person happy. So I'm a little bit biased because I really connected with Lauren. Their biggest weakness is Eric. He's a narcissist and if you are not a narcissist, you can't date a narcissist. You will never be happy and you will never be enough for them and they will constantly make you feel like shit. What is their biggest strength? I have no idea. I saw zero strengths with this couple whatsoever. Their story wraps up with them going on vacation to New York City. So they meet on a bridge, he asks her if they can make it work, and she just says no. I was like, thank God. I was so glad that she was like, no, I'm not doing this. I have too much respect for myself. And they kind of just go their separate ways. And this really made me like her so much more. So of course I did some more research and it looks like she is currently dating someone else and pretty happy with the photos that they post on her Instagram. The big takeaway from this couple is that if anyone asks you to change anything about yourself or threatens that if you don't change it about yourself, they're going to break up with you, believe them. That is a red flag, and that is not something that is going to change. We're now going to shift to the couples that seem to have it together a little bit more. And that first one is Kate and Cam. So Kate and Cam met in high school. They were together for three years, and then someone cheated, the trust was broken, and well, they broke up. The show does a really good job at setting it up so that it seems like he cheated, but it was her that cheated. And you find it out pretty quickly, but I was very surprised by this, just in how the setup was. She calls the show, she wants to give it another shot. So Cam shows up. Their personalities are very different, but they get along really well. She's a little bit more rigid, he's very goofy, but they kind of poke fun at each other and they laugh a lot and they just have instant chemistry. Watching them interact together makes me smile. Their biggest strength is literally how well they get along. They seem like they're really good friends almost from the beginning. At one point in the show, all of the women that are in the couples go to dinner and meet each other and one of the other women looks at Kate and says, you cheated on him before, clearly something was missing. Why do you wanna to try to make it work? How do you know that that thing isn't still missing that wasn't there before? And Kate doesn't have an answer. And I thought that that was really interesting because you were seeing it from the perspective of the person who did the cheating. And I think that is a good question. You know, if you cheated, why would you want to try again? If you made a mistake, have you guys worked on whatever it was that led you in that direction? Now, of course, their biggest issue is trust. There are multiple times throughout the show where she says, I need him to trust me, I need him to trust me, I need him to trust me. And she kind of wants it all to happen right now and just wants to be in control. They haven't moved past it yet. And that's something that if they were to stay together, it was gonna take some work and was gonna take some time. And I'm not sure if she has the patience for that because she really wants to be able to move on 
now. They go on vacation together, um, I believe somewhere in Canada. Uh, it was the most boring location of all of them that they could have gone. Not that Canada's boring, but they just went and like played in the snow. Um, which is actually kind of cute for them, I guess. Uh, so they meet up and they decide that they're gonna make it work. They want to be together and they wanna try. So I did some more research. It's not always happy ever after. It looks like they moved in together, they tried, and then they broke up. Now on Kate's Instagram, it looks like she's dating someone new and Cam comments and makes jokes and everything seems fine. The biggest takeaway from this couple is that being friends and getting along isn't always enough. And I think that if you have had a rupture in the trust in your relationship, you really need to go and get therapy and try to work through it together. The last couple, the couple that from the beginning you think has the biggest shot, Diane and Peter. Diane and Peter are in their 50s and they met when they were in their 20s. They have not seen each other for 28 years years. When they originally met, she was living in Florida, he was living in Australia. They dated for two years and just couldn't make the long distance work. In that period of time, they both got married, they had kids, and they both got divorced. And now they are seeing each other for the first time. And the moment they see each other, you just see the fireworks again. They're so excited. They're instantly happy. Um, Diane might be one of my favorite people in the entire world. She is like this very seems earthy spirited person who is just positive all the time but has a lot of um beliefs about herself and what she wants out of life and isn't willing to sacrifice any of that and peter seems extremely easygoing and happy and passionate um and you you just think like okay this is like the throwaway couple. This is the couple that is going to figure it out and the magical couple that's going to rekindle what they had in the past and everything's going to be perfect. They go skinny dipping together. They go hiking. They go grocery shopping. He cries in almost every episode. And it makes me wonder like what other emotional damage is there? What else is going on with this guy? And I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with crying. I cry, you probably cry, but every single episode, I mean, maybe he is just super sensitive, but I'm guessing that there's something else going on there. Their biggest strength is their communication. They tell each other what they're thinking, what they're feeling, why they're feeling that way, and they work on it. They apologize if they've hurt each other, and then they move forward. They have better communication than any other couple on the show and probably 90% of the couples that I've seen in therapy. However, their biggest weakness is the distance. She lives in North Carolina, he lives in Australia. In the last episode, for their vacation, they go to Paris because of course they do. Um, Paris, I believe, was actually where they met, so it all kind of comes back full circle, which is adorable. Now, Peter decides that he is going to propose to Diane in front of the Eiffel Tower and she says yes. So the show ends with them being engaged. Now from what I was able to find online, that may not have lasted for very long. There was an Australian magazine that printed that shortly after filming ended, they broke up. And I think the big takeaway with this couple is maybe sometimes it's okay to leave the past in the past. Peter seemed to really have his heart set on that she was going to be the one. At one point he even says that throughout his 20 year marriage, he thought of her every single day, which is also a sign that there might be some other things going on there that are more than just this romantic love. That's the four couples, the young love, the passionate fighters, the narcissist, and the resurgent couple. The big takeaway of the entire show is that people don't change. Sorry, they just don't. The vast majority of the time, the person you originally dated is going to be the same person that you date later. There is probably a reason that you broke up. And if you decide to get back together, you might just end up repeating that pattern again. So you need to think long and hard about, is it worth it? So that's my little spiel on getting back with your ex. I don't recommend it. 
but I have seen it work and in fact one of my very good friends has been back with their ex for well over 10 years and they are very happy. So things do happen and it is possible. Back with the X is streaming now on Netflix, so I hope that you will go and find it. It's actually a great show. I know I gave away a lot now, but it's actually pretty good and you can learn a lot from it. And like I said, it's not a bunch of fake drama. It's actually kind of quality TV, so I highly recommend it. I'll see you next time. Bye. Thanks for watching. I've got a lot of content in production and I don't want you to miss out. So go ahead and click that subscribe button. And in the meantime, check out one of these other videos. And don't forget to send me your questions about sex to thomastalksabout at gmail.com.